Hello and welcome to Firewall Management 201. I'm Professor Wall and today we'd like to talk to you about the most common firewall misconfigurations and what to do about them. So as part of my academic work I've conducted research that investigates what type of misconfigurations are out there on, in firewalls and this covered research of Checkpoint and Cisco firewall configurations from close to 100 different organizations and today I'd like to share with you some of the highlights of that research and uh, some takeaway points from that. So the, the three most common misconfigurations that were observed in this study were the following. We found that rules that said to anywhere with any service, that was detected close to 60% of firewall configurations that were investigated. Also, firewalls that allowed outbound peer-to-peer -peer traffic were detected, these rules were detected in around 60% of the firewalls that were surveyed. And firewalls that allowed outbound email, SMTP, from a large number of IP addresses, that was detected in some 80% of firewall configurations. So, what is, what is the common here? You can see that these are all misconfigurations that pertain to outbound traffic. Now you could wonder why is this risky? After all, we are used to thinking that the inside of our network is more secure than the outside and traffic going from outside to inside is the risky one. Inbound traffic is the risky traffic. Well, that's no longer the case in, in the current risk scenarios that we find on the internet today. So think about a case where one of your internal computers gets infected by some malware and now it, it is a zombie. It's running some malware that is doing some malicious task. Maybe it's participating in denial of service attacks, maybe it's sending spam email, maybe it's leaking out information, harvesting credit card numbers, and that zombie has it's owned by some command and control center that's out in the internet somewhere. So the command and control center needs to control the zombie and send it commands telling it what to do. You would think that this traffic from the command and control center to the zombie would be inbound traffic from the firewall's point of view, coming from the command and control to the zombie. However, that's not the case. Malware authors architect their solutions so that really it's the zombie that initiates the communication. The zombie keeps asking the, send, the command and control center in the outbound direction, do you have something for me? Do you have something for me? And so from a firewall's point of view, the communication between the command and control center and the zombie is outbound. It's going from the inside network to the outside, even though the, the commands are really coming in inbound. So if we have one of these badly written rules like allow any service outbound or allow peer-to-peer -peer services outbound, what this means is that the traffic from the zombie towards the command and control center is allowed freely or the traffic from the zombie out towards the denial of service targets is allowed and the firewall is not blocking it. So that's why these things are considered to be quite risky and because of historical reasons firewall administrators pay less attention to outbound traffic so many firewalls 60 80 percent of firewalls are allowing this bad traffic outbound and it's our job as firewall administrators to, to limit that now let's take a closer look at the third one which is really the most common misconfiguration about SMTP being allowed from many, many different IP addresses. Why is that a problem? Well, let's look back at the zombie. If it's participating in a spam campaign, it will try to send email to the various recipients of the uh, unsolicited email, and it will do so by sending SMTP connections straight out. If the firewall is allowing this traffic from basically any IP address in our internal network, the firewall is not filtering out and not blocking these spam emails. Whereas the correct way of setting up the email is to have our internal systems send their email to an internal mail gateway and only the mail gateway 
will send the email out towards the internet and then the firewall will only have a single rule allowing email from that designated mail gateway towards the internet and not from everywhere. If we set up our email system to work in the recommended way, then when the zombies try to send email out, the firewall will block them because those emailers are not going along the designated route. So again, this explains why having lots of IP addresses allowed to send email directly out is a bad idea. So what is the takeaway from all of this? The takeaway is, the tip of the day is, lock down your outbound rules. You need to pay attention to the rules that are allowing traffic from your inside network towards the internet. You need to audit them, shrink them to the bare minimum, and make sure that you're not allowing wide access in the outbound direction because that outbound is just as likely to can become an inbound direction as well. Thank you.